It's not about going out and building a shelter. It's not about knowing how to start a fire. It's about knowing how to become part of that wilderness that you're in. Because until you truly embrace your surroundings, until you truly, until you're able to intertwine with your personal space until it truly becomes your personal space, you're just not grasping it. If you look at a rock and you see a rock, you haven't seen it yet. That light bulb in your head is still just as cold and dark as it was the day you first put it in because it's not just a rock. It's so many different things. The evolution, the history, and the, the, the souls that have scorched this earth throughout the hundreds of years that we've been around just here in America alone is just phenomenal. It's breathtaking to go down to a, a site, sit down, and think about what's truly happened there. It doesn't have to be a historical site for it to be historical. I can go right up the road to a creek that I frequent a lot and there's just such a feeling has always come over me when I get there. Just a, a an inner peace and, a, and a, a whisper in the back of my head that since I've started following Dave and started practicing to be a pathfinder and practicing my skills I've never understood what those voices were I've never understood that feeling and that presence and now when you go out there you can really feel the people that have been there before you the things that have happened you get to just a sense of calmness because you understand you take greater appreciation in what's out there um, I have no doubts in my mind that if I hadn't have stumbled across Dave's site and started listening to what the man had to say that my life would have been a lot harder than it is right now and I'm not a, a well-off man I live very meager I live in a small little rundown trailer with holes in the floor uh, the leak doesn't the roof doesn't leak so I'm blessed I have food I have heat and air um, I'm comfortable but I can do better and as God allows it things will get better but uh, I have been hell on wheels from the day I was 16 years old back 1988 when I came out of service I was tormented I had some issues for reasons that I won't go into in this video things that happened when I was in service I got hooked on crack coke acid pot about anything I could find I'd do it I was an alcoholic I was a part-time gunsmith so to speak I didn't I can't go into a gun and rebuild the insides of it but I would beautify the gun I could re -blue them sand them finish the stocks that kind of thing and I had an old 38 that my dad wanted me to redo for him so I stripped it down re -blued it put new handles on it made the handles for him and I uh, took it out in the woods that day and fired you know 15 20 20 rounds out of it uh, went back home that night put it on the nightstand we had a huge party and uh, I was totally wasted I was wasted beyond recognition and uh, me and a girl had just had some hard words and broke up and mom had called raising cane with me my roommates were fighting with me the typical things that happen when you follow down that trail and I remember I was sitting there playing with the pistol and I would cock the hammer back pull the trigger and catch it and somebody asked me what I was doing and I said I'm gonna kill myself and I put it to my head pulled the trigger only I didn't catch the hammer in time and the gun went off now being as drunk and stoned as I was we figured I must have moved the gun and it went off in the ceiling somewhere so we looked all over that room for hours looking for a bullet hole and never found one so I put the gun back on the nightstand and took took it back to my dad the next day and uh, you know told him everything was great shot beautiful which it did I mean it was a really nice shooting pistol it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I was talking with my mom about this when she was diagnosed with cancer 
and she said you know that pistol that your dad had it wouldn't shoot and I said what do you mean it wouldn't shoot I shot a lot of bullets out of it she said well they took it down to the range to sell it and the guy fired a shot out of it and he didn't hit the target so he walked within five feet of it and pulled the trigger and still didn't hit the target and when they opened the gun up they found three bullets in the barrel one of the bullets was stopped right at my temple in the barrel of that gun and there is no doubt in my mind that that was the hand of God intervening to tell me that he had something better planned for me that he needed me and uh all my life I fought with why that was you know ever since that day I've said well what in the world does God need with me and uh, a few years back in 98 I got called to preach and like every good Jonah I ran like crazy and uh, I left the church my marriage ended in divorce for various reasons. Part of that equation of what I needed was God with no doubt. Um, you, you really, you have to take that first step in a walk with Christ to understand the feeling that it gives you, the openness and the, the heart that you have. God has replaced the old cold piece of coal that was inside of me and just filled with me there's just so much compassion I can't even express what's going on inside of me and I said God you know I can't stay this way I know myself in my heart I know that no matter what you do I'm gonna fall I need help and he blessed me with the most miraculous woman I could ever hope to meet she's younger than I am young enough to be my daughter but she treats me better than any woman twice her age or three times her age ever could have dreamed of treating me. We don't argue. We don't fight. Everything is as it's supposed to be. We are truly one person. And with Dave coming along and me finding his videos, it just completed that circle that, that God started forming for me in my life and has brought me back to a spot to where... I feel like I'm 18 again. I'm able to, to get out, take pride in what I'm doing, to, to try to learn and to push myself harder than I ever have. Um, um, we practice self-reliance so that we can stay alive when the crap hits the fan, so to speak. Um, I practice self-reliance so I can stay alive. It keeps my head straight. It keeps me centered. It reminds me of what we came from. It reminds me that no matter how bad things are, I can make them better. Um, there's just so much that it entails. You would have to be inside my head for an hour, and God bless you if you were. I don't. I don't know how I deal with it. I doubt anybody else could, but you'd really have to get inside my head to understand what it does to me so I thank everybody that shares on these videos the teaching um, dwelling into their lives and into their their personal selves so to speak and share them with us I hope this hadn't bored you too much everybody rock on keep practicing and I hope to see you in the next video cable, mine, cable guy here peace out